Hi, everybody. How's it going? Wow, a lot of questions in the built-in chat. Am I getting famous? I don't think so, but it is fun. Um, I'm going to go ahead and promote the link real quick, if you guys don't mind. Hope everybody's doing well. Still got a little bit of coffee. Um, not coffee, C-O-F-F-E-E. -E. I think coffee's disgusting. But a little bit of coffee, like C-O-U-G-H-Y. So won't go super long tonight, especially because I have to save my voice for something pretty cool uh, that some of you guys know about, but I'll talk about in just a sec. Just going to promote the link real quick. Uh, we are live. Come on over. Host. Okay. Let's get it out of the way. Mariners lose 5-3. to three. They fall to 4-8 and eight on the season. And they lose the first two games against the Blue Jays in the three-game series. Go over the scoring plays. Third inning was pretty bad. George Springer singles home Dalton Varsho. That makes it one nothing. And Bo Bichette clobbered, and I mean clobbered, a home run to make it three to nothing at the end of the third. Fourth inning, more trouble. IKF doubles home Kevin Biggio. That makes it four nothing. And George Springer singles home IKF five nothing. Mariners do get some late in. Insurance was almost the word I said. Insurance that they don't get shut out. Dominic Canzone hits a home run to make it 5-1. And Mitch Haniger homers home Julio, 5-3, but that's it. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Chris, this team sucks, but your videos make even the losses bearable. Thanks for being such a trooper. No, no, John. Thank you. Thank you, because... Oh, man, guys, this is ugly. This is just really ugly. Here's a great way to put it right here. This is some of the most boring professional baseball I've witnessed from a team that doesn't have bottom-dweller talent. This is absurd, even if they pop out of it again. It, it is absurd. Like, we can't take back these dozen games that we watched, right? We can acknowledge that they aren't necessarily predictive, but they weren't fun. They weren't even kind of fun. I mean, gosh, I mean, <laughs> take some blood pressure, fresher meds than rant for me. I don't know if I have a rant in me per se, but we're going to talk about it. We are going to talk about it. Uh, we need an organized myoy group therapy hug. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to do my best to get maybe not a therapy group hug, but a group together. And if, People want to give me a hug. That's totally fine. I'm uh, I'm a hugger. I'm a hugger. Um, all right. Let's talk about some positives from this game. There are a couple. Um, just since I'm staring at it right now, the bullpen did a nice job. Low leverage for sure, but Thornton pitched well. Uh, Ryan Stanek had some issues, but I think overall the stuff looked okay. Gabe Spire looked fine. Um, I thought the bullpen did a nice job and we are just desperate for positives. We are desperate for positives here. Offensively, Canzone's starting to drive the baseball, draws a couple walks too. Lovely to see some walks from Dom Canzone. Uh, Julio reaches twice. Jorge Polanco reaches twice. Mitch Haniger with the two run homer. He had kind of scuffled since opening day. My buddy Nate Bishop brought it up, and uh, it's nice to see him drive a baseball. I, I, I'm, I'm desperate for positives. People think of me, at least some people do, as a negative guy, a glass half empty guy. I think I'm more of just a, this is a glass and there's some water in it. But I try to look for the positives, too. I don't want to be negative. I used to want to be negative. It led to a lot of miserable years. I want this team to be good. I'm just not going to lie to you about it. I want these positives. I'm desperate for these positives. There's just not a whole heck of a lot. There's just no a whole heck of a lot. My buddy Nelson says, getting 2010 vibes, that team that had Cliff Lee, Felix Bedard, Fister Vargas, and lost 100, feels so much like that. I mean, over the first 12 games, they've played like it. Hell, they've played worse. They are on pace 
to go 54 and 108. 54 and 108. Now, they're not going to. I think that, though, and I talked about this on Molly Watt Monday, you see the floor of this team. We haven't seen the ceiling, obviously. Oh, I hope we haven't seen the ceiling. But we've seen the floor. We have seen the floor. Uh, before we get into the negatives and all that stuff, let's make sure that I thank Simply Seattle. They provide the very best in Seattle sports gear. Awesome stuff for the Mariners, Kraken, Seahawks, Huskies, Storm, Sounders. You can find it all at simplyseattle.com. Once you find it all, enter code MOLLYWAP15. I'd really appreciate you guys doing that because that takes 15% of your order. So I'm glad you're saving money. It also shows that you're paying attention. And that's big. Because, you know, that means that Simply Seattle is investing in this for a reason. And I want them to invest in this for a reason, right? So, MollyWap15, www.simplyseattle.com. There's always a link in the description. Thank you guys so very much. Um, two things before we get into the, the all of it. <laughs> Number one, uh, please hit like and subscribe. I would really appreciate that. I'm, I will ask again in about 10 minutes or so, but it's important. Please hit like, please hit subscribe. Number two, I will bring this up before the end of this thing again, too. I'm going to be hosting the Ian Furness show tomorrow from 12 to 3 with my buddy Jessamine and my buddy Anders. I'm so excited for it, and I would so much appreciate you guys tuning in from 12 to 3. This is my dream job. The thing I wanted to do more than anything in the entire world was to talk sports on KJR. And the, to get to do it on Molly Watt Monday and to go on shows like Softy and some other guys is great. Love those guys. To get to host my show, to get to host a show, to be a guest host of a show, I am over the moon. I am over the flipping moon. Please tune in tomorrow, 12 to 3, 93.3 KJR. You can find it on iHeart. You can find it on a bunch of stuff. I'll try to remember to put a link to it, but please check that out because I am just, man, I am almost in tears thinking about it. I have wanted to do this for so long. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate the kind words. Um, Now we get to go from that. To George Kirby. Ah, man, this was not good. And this is two in a row not good. And it's disappointing because, number one, you have such high hopes for George Kirby. And remember, disappointment does not equate to prediction. I don't think anybody's predicting George Kirby to be this bad. I hope that no one's projecting Luis Castillo to be as bad as he's been in his three starts, or at least mediocre. But these last two from Kirby, unacceptable? Is that the right word for this? His command, and he talked about it after the start, you know, I knew I was going live, so I wanted to see what Scott Service said, and boy, does he look like he's having a great time right now. He just looks, service looks furious, number one. And number two, he brought it up. He's just catching way too much of the plate. And Kirby brought it up as well, that he's just catching way too much of the plate. And you see, too, that his secondary stuff isn't good enough at this point to miss bats at a high enough level to justify calling him an ace type pitcher. I hope that just made sense. It made sense in my head. I, I just don't think that you can. And there, here's the other thing. Like four ratings of five run baseball is bad. If you get that every time from your starter, you're in trouble. But there's just such little margin of air too, right? Like you see, hey, Lola, it's okay. My poor dog. My poor dog. Um, sorry, guys. It's uh, it's been tough. It's been tough. But like, what the heck was I even talking about? You see the margin of error. The fact that these starters, if they have these bad starts, 
The Mariners are not going to get these guys into hard to lucky no decisions. They're just not good enough offensively to make up for this. And we can just go into the offense now. Not good enough. J.P. Crawford was not good enough today. Ty France was awful. And Ty France was kind of due for an awful game. You know, I think hitting him cleanup, by the way, is a terrible look. I get it. But no, I don't. Uh, Mitch Garver was awful today. Big Dumper was awful today. Oh, Josh Rojas had a decent game, if we want to go back to the positives. I mean, the thing is, is the Mariners have scored five runs in these two games, right? It's not indicative of how well they've played offensively, and I don't mean that as a compliment. They've needed late-inning heroics to get to those five runs in two games. For the first six innings of the last two games, and it's been more than that, of course. But for the first six innings of these last two games, this offense has been anemic, pathetic, awful. And you can talk about the defense. You can talk about the starting pitching. But I was told that this offense was the best that they've had in a while. Right? I'm not seeing much evidence of it. And if I am, all that tells me is how crappy this offense has been in the past. Let's see if we've got some questions. Uh, help me, Chris. Uh, I'll do my best. How does this keep happening every year? I'm beginning, I think that's what you beginning to think this is an approach issue. This is the same talking points as the last few years. Help me out. Yeah, it has to be an approach issue, right? Because this is a pattern. This is not bad luck either. The Mariners are not, oh, dang, a close one run loss here, a close one run loss there, you know, that type of thing. No, they're getting their butts kicked. Like they lose by two tonight. No, they didn't. <laughs> I mean, they did, but no, they didn't. This game was non-competitive for the majority of it. There's something going on. And maybe, you know what? It's it's worked to a point, right? Because they have had good records the last couple of years, and they made the postseason in 2022. And they were in a division lead in 2023. But they didn't win the division in 2022. And they didn't even make the playoffs in 2023. These slow starts matter. These slow starts absolutely matter. They are not death sentences. But I'm tired of watching this team have to go uphill. I'm tired as a Mariner fan of always watching this team Go uphill. I want to either tread or go downhill for a little bit. Is that too much to ask? Oh. Man. Let's see. I just want to get through some of these questions. Or not get through. By the way, again, reminder, please hit like. Please hit subscribe. All that good stuff. I really appreciate it. Um, Chris, with Steven Strasburg announcing retirement, do you ever torture yourself with what ifs? Like if Unieski Betancourt didn't get hot? Oh my gosh. What, what are you doing to me, young Vulpix? What are you doing to me? I torture myself with that constantly. Constantly think about it. And before you tell me, hey, the Mariners would have ruined Steven Strasburg, no, they would not have. No. Nope, Steven Sprosberg, number one, was unruinable. And number two, I watched a pretty good young pitcher handle the success okay. Can you imagine Felix and Strasburg at the top of the rotation? Can you imagine it? And Dustin Ackley was better than we thought or think of. Like he wasn't, he didn't live up to the hype of a number two pick. But he wasn't bad. 
comparing his career to Strasburg, though, is just. What are you doing to me? Why did you do this to me? Uh... Sorry if you answer this a lot, but how do you think the Mariners handle Harry Ford the next few years? We're in dire need of some at-bats. You know, um, it's a good question. I have always kind of thought of Harry Ford as either the trade bait or the answer to Big Dumper not signing an extension. I don't think that there's room for him right now. Like Cal Rally, yeah, it's a frustrating start. I Cal Rally and Julio starts. Like to say I have, I just can't have concern. I'm sorry, I can't. I can't have any concern about those guys. And you're not moving Harry Ford to the outfield. Not yet. Because his development is important. And he's not good enough offensively to just go, well, we need just to get his bat in. There's nobody in the system right now at the upper levels who's good enough for that. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I think that he's just going to develop as the catcher. If the Mariners can get an extension for Rally, they trade him. If they can't, he's your starting backstop in like 2026. I can't believe Rayleigh has fallen so far down the depth chart. How is he not pinch hitting for Ross in the ninth? He has power. He must hate it here. I probably would have gone to Rayleigh there as well. Now, Rojas has been a consistent offensive option for them, to be fair. But like, yeah, I, I probably, that I want that two-run homer. I want that bloop in the blast. I think that's a really good call, and I think they do have, have any confidence in Luke Rayleigh whatsoever. So sorry for the stress. It's okay. It's totally fine. It's just, yeah. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Let's see if there's anything. Um. Presuming current trend continues for the next few weeks, what's the next shoe to drop to instigate a change in direction? It's a great question. And I will again point out that these guys do not have long-term deals right now. But I think you're talking, and this is just me super hypothetical. I have no intel on this. I'm thinking you're talking about probably two months of this before you see any changes. Except I would say that, and I'm not rooting for this, and I'm not even saying it's his fault. I I think Scott Service has made some mistakes. Long story short, I think Scott Service's job security is a lot different than Jerry DePoto's. Considerably different. And if the team feels like they can get a shot in the arm by making a managerial change, if they feel like Scott Service has lost the clubhouse at some point, I'm certainly not saying that now. Or if they just feel like it's a good PR move, then yeah, I could see Service make that being the, the change. If there's going to be a change, it's going to be that. If they fall way out of this thing, if they are... 15 games under 500 in the middle of June and they are 15 or so games back. That's probably what it's going to take. I know that can frustrate some folks. I don't, I really struggle rooting for people to lose their jobs. And I don't, the only people I want to see lose their jobs for the Seattle Mariners is this ownership group. I want this team to be sold. As frustrated as I get with DePoto, as frustrated as I get with the answers he gives that placates ownership, I don't think he deserves to lose his job. And I don't think Scott Service does yet either. But I understand people who are feeling that way right now. I definitely understand it. Um, let's see. Let's see if we've got anything. You guys are asking so many questions, and I really appreciate it. There's just so many um so many good ones here. I'm sorry. I'm doing my best to get to them. Um, I hear you saying that you don't expect us to keep playing this way, but in my opinion, this is what the team is until they prove otherwise. As it stands to 2024, totally fair. There is no evidence right now 
of the 2024 Seattle Mariners being a good team. Other than the 2023 Mariners were a pretty good team. There's a lot of pieces from it. Now, it doesn't carry over from year to year. But yeah, I mean, I don't blame anyone who feels like this is going to be a bad season right now. I personally disagree. And it depends on what your definition of what a bad season is. This team's not winning the division. This team is not going to win the World Series. That's extremely disappointing. But that's not based on how they played this year. That's based on how I felt about this team coming into the year. Unless they make drastic improvements in other areas, this team is not going to do those things. But can this team still compete for a playoff spot? You bet your sweet bippy. Who looks so good in the American League wildcard spots that the Mariners aren't catching? Like who? Who in the AL Central is eliminating the Seattle Mariners? Come on. We can acknowledge how crappy this is, and I acknowledge how crappy this is, and also acknowledge that it's probably going to get a lot better. But boy, it's been miserable. Like, I have not had less fun, fewer fun, whatever the hell I'm supposed to say. This sucks. This has been a bad, bad stretch of baseball and not fun to watch at all. Um. I don't know why, but I feel service has garnered enough goodwill to ride out a bad slump. I feel like pitching coach and batting coach would be first to go potentially. A hundred percent agree. Honestly, a pitching coach and a batting coach are just scapegoats. Sometimes they do a lot of great things. But, uh, yeah, they, I mean, there's nobody in the organization that is a hundred percent safe. Nobody. Not a single thing. If ownership is bogging us down like we think and our team is based on 90-something percent metrics for decisions, I can't imagine a top manager wanting to come here. Well, I don't know. I, I, I think that a lot of how valuable the Seattle job would be if it came open would be who the general manager is. You know? And managers, I'm just, I've said it a bunch, they are overrated figures. They can only do so much. The, uh, there are things that they do that we cannot internalize. We cannot measure because they're happening inside the clubhouse. We don't know. And from everybody I've talked to, Scott Service is pretty darn good in that clubhouse. Now, I've also heard from some people that that clubhouse is miserable right now so to answer your question it's going to i don't think you can draw the elite guys the guys who are ready to win who are begging to win that world series you know that type of guy like recently and i'm not even saying don mattingly would be a good candidate uh good candidate for the seattle mariners but uh mattingly recently said I need to be in a situation where I can go win a World Series. I don't think that Don Mattingly would view the Seattle Mariners as that team, per se. A lot could change in the next couple of months. Uh, let's see here. Are there any free agent managers that would actually be improvements on service? None that I can think of off the top of my head. I mean, you know. Like, I'm not putting Joe Madden or anyone in over him. Um, but, yeah. I, I I just don't think that Scott Service is the guy to blame here. Even though, if he does lose this clubhouse, it's going to be problematic. It's going to be problematic. Again, a reminder, please, to hit like. Please hit subscribe. All that good stuff. I'm going to promote the show uh, just real quick on the old Twitter. Going. Come on in, exclamation point. Got to use exclamation points. Uh, does the rest of the, ooh, does the rest of the league see Stanton in the same light as we do? Seems like that would also be a huge roadblock to hiring any serious candidates. Yeah. 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 Yep. <laughs> uh-huh. 
Yep. Mattingly was my favorite player, and yes, bring him in. Hey, I love Donnie Baseball too, but he's got to shave those sideburns. I, I, Don Mattingly, I think, is an okay manager, but it would it would be kind of fun to see him. Very different manager than Scott Service. Um, but, yeah. Acuna is Donaldson and Freeman. Tatis has Hosmer and Machado when they first came up. Julio is being asked to be that guy. That lineup is really missing a proven veteran slugger and some guys with fire. Yeah. I mean, there's no question about it that the Mariners are asking Julio. Oh, they're asking from Julio what very few teams are asking of young players. Maybe you could argue Arizona with Corbin Carroll, but different situation, right? Because Corbin Carroll's hidden at the top of that lineup. They're not asking him to be the major run producer on that team. Asking a 23-year-old to carry your lineup is asking a whole heck of a lot. And it's not fair. It's not fair. And it's not fair to Julio is what I mean. And look, Julio can play better. He needs to drive the baseball. He needs to lift the baseball better. But you guys saw yesterday, like his expected batting average on balls that he hit yesterday, all above 320 and a few of them above 600. He's going to be fine. There's a lot of reasons to be concerned about this team. Julio Rodriguez was not one of them. Oh, by the way, I wanted to bring up a stat that my buddy Ian Furness, uh, who I'm hosting for tomorrow on KJR. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Um, uh, brought up this stat. The Mariners have not scored first in six of their games, and they've lost all of them. I just don't see a lot of fight in this team right now. And that's disappointing because I do think there is some fire in this lineup. Not necessarily like big power guys. But there are some red asses on this team. Sorry for the swear. Mitch Haniger is a red ass. Ty France. Mitch Garver's been that way. There are, there are guys who can fire this team up. Big Dumper, one of the hardest working people from everyone I've spoken to. But they just look miserable. They look like when they come to the plate, they look like they'd rather be somewhere else. I have no evidence that that's true, but their faces tell me that. You tell me if I'm wrong. They look like they are not having fun whatsoever. And in turn, I'm not having any fun. Let's see. Still like it better than Steinbrenner. Yeah, that's that's one of my favorite jokes of all times. Ah. Well, as my buddy Brian says, the vibes are bad. And the good news is, and I joked about this on Twitter, I'll give you the good news and I'll give you the bad news. The good news is there's 150 more of these. The bad news is there could be 150 more of these. Ah, oh, I, I just, I just want, I just want this team to win. I just want this team to win, but it has been just a miserable first dozen games. And I'll talk about it tomorrow, 12 to 3 on KJR. I'm so excited. Please tune in for that. Please tune in for that. I'd really appreciate it. Send all your questions, text line, all that stuff. Tomorrow, we've got Logan Gilbert against former Mariner legend Yusei Kikuchi. The vibes of a sweep would just be whatever the opposite of immaculate is. Go get a win. Then you get schedule gets interesting. Got the Cubs, the Reds, the Rockies. Oh, boy, if the Mariners do not win a series against the Colorado Rockies, I will be uh, apoplectic. That's one of the worst organizations and teams in baseball. Thank you guys so much. Please hit like and subscribe if you haven't. Sorry to ask so many times. It'll get better. Awaculate. The opposite of immaculate is wacky lit. What a perfect way to end this. Talk to you guys soon. Wait.
three, two, one. Exactly 30 minutes. Bye.